Hello and welcome to this first look of the upcoming Flight Day Sim Boeing 727 version 2. I'm really excited to show you the, uh, this aircraft to you guys today. Um, this is going to come out very soon and a lot of new things have been added and improved. Uh, for those who want to know the details and want to know all about it, uh, follow the link in the description. It will uh, uh, bring you right to the forum that Jack has posted about the upcoming 727 version 2. I'll just be going over some uh, little things, not everything, just some major improvements or major things that have been added, nothing uh, in the details. So with that said, I hope you do enjoy, and I do want to note that everything that you see here is still work in progress and still may change even though it is close to release. Just letting you know. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, I'm currently uh, aligning the CYNS, so it should be aligned quick, fairly quickly in around 2-3 minutes. Um, so yeah, uh, I already uh, completed the cockpit safety inspection and the preliminary cockpit preparation. So we're now going to do the pre-flight procedures, and as I do the pre-flight procedures, basically you're going to see all the new things that have been added. I'll mention a few things. As you probably already can see, there are quite a few additions to this aircraft. Um, Alright, so let me go ahead and put the overhead. As you can see, the uh, safety relay bypass switch has been added, and this is not actually not tested until uh, before taxi, so get that done later. Um, a warning test, a recorder, and uh, I made the sounds a little quiet so you can hear me because uh, for some reason my mic. Um, records me at a very low volume, but I do apologize. I am almost screaming right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so uh, compasses have been added. Uh, the navigation display switches have been added. The uh, cargo fire test, auto break RTO. The emergency exit lights now have functions. So if you test them, turn them on. You can see the emergency exit light does illuminate on those. Okay, we're on the seatbelt signs and passenger, have the uh, no smoking signs, transponder, okay, pro feed, direction window heat, come on, pro feed comes on later, navigation lights on, the uh, flight director has been moved up to here, and you can now test the engine fire test, as you can see, uh, you also have a belt cutout switch. Uh, the one thing about this is that usually you would hold this, you'd press the belt cutout uh, button, and uh, it, the sound would go off the oral, the uh, warning horn. But because you only have one mouse, you cannot do this. So there's a little trick. I'm not sure if this is an X plane trick or a flight sim trick. I have tested this with other aircraft, some seem to work like this, some don't, so I can't really say what uh, this is, but basically you can hold down a switch, go to the chase view, let go, go back in, and then you can click whatever you want, and the position of the switch will stay until you actually click it away. So that's pretty neat, that's pretty cool, and then you can just release it. Okay. Uh, flight engineers panel, central TR, okay, alley power can come on, close the fuel ties. Our external powers are source, the APU, that looks good here, that was, has a function, the OV test, everything set here is required, we can uh, make sure these are fully cold, check all supply ducts, okay. I'm just going to set this to 10,000 feet. We're not really going to do flight today. We're just going to uh, depart and see how it is. Okay, good. Close these up. Set our radio tuning panel as required. The heat will require that in just a moment. Like a system come on. You can now test the enunciators on both. Dump panel, everything looks good here. I'll conduct the APU fire test properly. 
Reset twice and you'll now be able to start the APU. Position test. Usually you keep this on off and uh, you'll then see the position of the flaps and slats as you deploy the or as you uh, extend the flaps and the slats. Okay, uh, so with that, we can go ahead and start the APU now. Close the field tie and start. The APU crank light, come on. And the APU light. If you wanted to, you can also turn on the aft boost pump in the number 2 tank for the APU to. Uh, so you can supply the APU with fuel. But there's uh, no need to because the APU automatically suction feeds fuel for itself. Um, that's what this, uh, this APU light stands for that the APU is uh, sufficiently um, feeding itself with fuel in the number two tank. So you don't have to switch this on, it's just on your own behalf if you want to. Okay. Well, the GPWS test, you can actually move these now, you can do the GPWS test. Check everything here. Good. Light test. Looks good to go. Thing looks good here. I'm not sure why the radar is on. That's odd. Got an error for. How come? Our IRS of mine. It's really odd. Okay. okay. Well, let me just. Yeah, we're just gonna set the snap because we're not really doing a flight anyways. There's no need to uh, worry about that right now. And that looks good here. Everything here. The mock airspeed tests have been good. Mode B. The yaw damper test has been also included and requires the hydraulic uh, pressure, and you'll see the upper and lower rudder move as you test them left and right. Okay. You can test this. We're up to 10,000 feet. Looks good. Or parking brake. Oh yeah, and a new feature now um, is that you do not require the parking brake to be able to connect the external power. So you don't have to rely on the parking brake anymore, which is awesome. Here we got good volts and frequency. We can apply the AV generator, and we can now disconnect the external power. Now, if you do accidentally forget to disconnect the external power, it will automatically disconnect for you once you start moving. It is a uh, motion sensed. So you don't have to worry about it too much. This as well. And that is pretty much it. We can now do the before start procedure. We can go and set our speed. Which should be 153. Okay, our heading 250 looks good. Altitude is set. Perfect. We can come on. Boost pumps one per tank. Hydraulics set. Before start checklist. And uh, this is also a new menu system that you have. And it is the checklist system. I have currently made my own checklist. This is the uh, actual checklist used in real operation. But uh, this checklist is meant to be for those who have, are struggling with the aircraft and just want to get up and fly. So you can uh, look at this checklist and it will, ha it will guide you step by step on powering up the aircraft and getting it up in the air. Which is really neat and uh, helpful for those who do not understand the aircraft and don't want to get into the manuals just yet. And, and we're not going to follow the, uh, the correct procedures now and we're not going to do all those uh, checklists yet. We're just going to make sure our packs are off, galley power off, and we can now push back. So we're going to start engine one first, so we have hydraulic pressure. 
Once we have engine one stabilized, we'll start our pushback. We're just looking for around 22 to 24% N2. And that looks good. Do this fuel to the system. Pressure light has extinguished. Our valve is closed. So well, that is good. You can now, which is I believe the news, this aircraft is the ground crew call, which is also included in the Boeing 732. So it's been transferred over to this aircraft, and you have the advanced pushback system. Now I love this pushback system. It is so much better than any other pushback system really out there. Uh, it's much better than Tugmaster because you have to do everything manual and uh, also some other companies that require you to manually uh, use the, the uh, pushback system it's just inconvenient because as a pilot you don't control uh, what the ground personnel do you don't do that so this is an awesome system very well thought of from Jack and uh, all you gotta do is set the ghost set it up how you want it release the parking brake and head out I really wish every developer would do this. This is so amazing, so helpful. You don't have to worry about uh, if you're gonna push back in the right place while you start your engines. You just start your engines, just concentrate on on all the gauges, and you're good to go. Such a neat tool. Such a neat tool. Low oil pressure has extinguished, starter valve is extinguished. We can now start engine number three. So, um, in the future, I will make in-depth tutorials of this aircraft to uh, get you from cold and dark all the way down to shut down as realistic as possible, just like the real, like a uh, real pilots would do. Um, we'll be covering correct procedures, correct operating procedures for this aircraft, and uh, so you can have an insight on what pilots had to do and what they all had to manage and why we require three pilots. The uh, the hands on. Also, we will be keeping uh, leaving on failures and maintenance system, which is right here. This is also a new panel here. It is the maintenance system, and as you can see, it includes the airframe, all three engines, and the APU. It will count up all the to the total time of how many hours you've used either your airframe, your engines, or APU. And of course, they will not. They're not. Uh, they don't start counting once you have the aircraft loaded such as the airframe will start once there's load on it so once it's once your aircraft is airborne it will start counting up your hours for the airframe for the engines once they start running of course and the same thing with the APU as they start running uh, they count up time as you can see here it says airframe number this is how many airframes or engines or APUs you've been going through so if you require to replace it because it's so critically damaged and you replace the, uh, let's, let's say the APU this would change to two, meaning you've been through two APUs throughout the whole lifespan of this aircraft. And it will keep counting up on how many times you've replaced it. If the if anything requires uh, attention and you have this you don't have this open, you will see an amber or sometimes even red signal here. Uh, this will the whatever you see black here, the uh, wrench and the uh, screwdriver will turn into a specific color depending on how critical the damage is and you, it will, you will see it, it will be, oh it's orange or red look at it, see what's the issue if you want to and uh, find it the, uh, 
the airframe, the engine, and the APU are color coded so you can um, immediately find which uh, component is a problem. So let's say if the engine 2 was orange, you could just go to the engine 2, look for whatever is not working, and you can conduct maintenance if you're in the correct state. Um, so as you can see, you must be on the ground, stop, the engine's off, and the APU off to perform maintenance. So you have to do all that before you can perform maintenance. maintenance. You can't just go in the air and perform maintenance in the air. I mean, come on. <laughs> and this is instant, so you don't have to wait 20 hours until it's done or something. It's instant, which is great. Okay, so that's the maintenance panel. And uh, our engine should be started now. And we can now verify all the frequencies and voltage of the generators and close their ties. Now all be synced, and they are. We can set the essential power to our nearest source, and for some reason, our external power is saying that we still have power from it. But that's absolutely incorrect. This should be on. St should illuminate. But we're gonna set. Uh, this should be on APU, and then we set to Gen One. Okay, so that was a pilot error. Uh, we on our galley power again, we can turn on all our fuel boost pumps. And this is not through procedures, we're just gonna quickly scan through this, making sure everything is good. Here you can come on. Everything looks good here, everything looks good here. Passing, come on. Come off, light. Hydraulic. Comes on, we can go ahead and apply fuel heat. And this fuel heat panel will n is now actually um, required for you to use. If fuel heat is at about negative 40 or lower, we'll have fluctuations in fuel, and your engines may fail or die out because not enough fuel is uh, being fed to the engine because the fuel is like a gel because it's being uh, frozen. So, you do need to watch out. We're going to go ahead and apply these as the uh, fuel temp is 0 degrees or lower. Okay. We can turn off our APU. Set our flaps. Transponder on out. And. And I believe that is it. We can go ahead and taxi out trim and taxi out. Note that this is not a, um, a tutorial or correct procedures that I'm doing here. Just me getting in the air, showing you the aircraft in action. Right. Come on. We're just going to depart from runway 25 left. Okay. Looking good. Radar can come on. And we're going to go ahead and depart. set eighty knots check B one rotate Positive rate gear up.
Okay, flight director. You're off. I'll break this arm. And that looks good. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I uh, didn't seem uh, too quiet or anything. This aircraft is definitely an amazing aircraft. I totally recommend uh, getting this aircraft. If you, especially if you like uh, classic aircraft such as the Boeing 732, also by Flight Sim. Absolutely love these aircraft. They're absolutely amazing. They're they are so satisfying to fly and I'm not trying to be biased here I'm not saying this uh, for uh, Jack or anything this is truly my opinion I truly enjoy this aircraft it's an absolute joy to fly and super satisfying once you actually get a whole flight in and that is what I'm going to cover in my next uh, videos probably and it's going to be in-depth tutorials on this aircraft going from planning a flight all the way down to shutdown I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you are looking forward to the tutorials. And uh, see you next time.